Good morning, welcome back to the vlog. On my schedule today, it's just a steady four hour ride. It's not like cold today, but there's like 25 kilometer wind, so it feels like temperature is much lower than the actual temperature. But it's all right, you know, it's not too bad. It's a nice day to be out on the bike. So I am currently going into a tailwind section. My opinion might change once I turn around. I planned a Strava route earlier on this morning. Today's route just kind of goes a little bit here, there and everywhere. I'm gonna initially head out towards the coast then turn around to myself and then head inland in towards the Rivington climb where I was at yesterday and then loop back home. The total distance is 80 miles or it's about 120, 130 kilometers. It should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Update time, it's now yeah, exactly. Exactly three hours later. This is the first time I've stopped and also the first time I pulled the camera out. It's like the wind's picked up quite considerably and I figured if I was riding along holding the camera to my face, it wasn't going to be the safest of things to do. So yeah, I just decided to crack on with training. Three hours done now, I've got about an hour to go. My original plan was to head over to Rivington today, which actually you can just about see in the distance there above, these, above this tree line. But just because of the wind and how exposed it is over there, I decided that I was going to stick a little bit closer proximity and just stick to the lanes doing a few laps and a few different routes around around the local lanes pretty close to my house uh, i'm gonna try and ride along and vlog but i'm gonna i'm gonna put the screen down so the microphone is exposed just so you can hear how windy it is you probably can't hear me right now but this is what 30 kilometer wind sounds like whilst i'm trying to talk to the camera not ideal i found some trees i found some shelter from the wind downside the downside to this though is i have to go up a great big hill a great big hill today i've got to every 20 minutes i'm going to do a 20 second max sprint which doesn't really in quest like in speaking it doesn't really sound that hard but let me tell you three and a half hours into a ride where certainly the majority feels like you're going into a headwind you know more than half it gets a little bit grippy speaking of grippy it's like a 15 percent climb oh i can see the top i can see the top I hate riding in the wind until I'm riding along a tailwind section doing 200 watts and 45 k's an hour. My last 15, 20 minutes home now are all gonna be into a tailwind. It's always the best way to finish a ride. All right, and that is it. All is said and done is driving back into my village now. Four, just over four hours done today. Definitely the windiest ride of the year, but it was still fun. I still got done what I wanted to do. Now it's feet up time. Now, nobody likes riding into headwind. It disrupts your rhythm and it just makes things harder. However, unfortunately, we can't decide the fate of Mother Nature. If we go out one day and it's windy, we just gotta deal with it. If you go out on your bike one day and, and it, there's a strong wind, inevitably that ride's gonna be harder had you not gone out or had you gone out on a day, had you gone out on a day where there was no wind. But there's three things, three little tips that I'm gonna give you that I do that certainly makes riding in the wind uh, a little bit easier. The first things first, when you're when you're riding into a headwind, really try and focus on your cadence. Naturally, as you know, as you're riding along, you turn a corner you hit the headwind uh you maintain the same gear your cadence just naturally drops a little bit and if you're riding along at a lower cadence you start to use your muscle fibers more and your your aerobic system a little bit less and in consequence you're going to fatigue a lot quicker the second thing is uh pretty basic when you're riding into the headwind ride a little bit harder and then as you turn around into the tailwind it's going to feel much much easier so you can ride a little bit easier and you don't have to apply too much pressure on the pedals to, to keep a decent speed so i always like to go a little bit harder into the headwind to just get it out of the way so then i can get through it as quick as possible before turning around at the midway point of a ride and in, into the tailwind back home the final thing and probably the biggest thing that's going to make a difference is your position on the bike as we all know getting as low as possible especially on the front end traps up the hips closes the lungs and isn't really that sustainable and isn't also that comfortable but as you can imagine the wind resistance between riding on the tops up here and then on the drops down here it, the, the difference is massive when you're on the tops essentially your whole chest and, and head is a windbreak and you'll probably notice between from this position here to a nice low tucked aero position here around a one and a half to two mile an hour speed increase just for the position that you're maintaining on the bike Anyway, I'm going to cut the vlog a little bit short today. The reason is because I've got to pack my bags. Ouch. I've got to pack my bags because tomorrow I'm heading off on a little bit of an adventure, which I'll talk more about in tomorrow's video. I'm heading away for a few days. But anyway, that's going to be the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop a thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.
here.